back to dentistry and more. So today's topic is sutural theory. So last class we have finished genetic theory. So let's continue our sutural theory. That is theory of growth and orthodontics. So various theories were there to explain the concept of growth and development in the head and face region. So the second theory is sutural theory. It was given by Weinman and Sichel in 1952. So as per this theory, all bond forming elements are growth centers. That is cartilage, suture and periosteum. And the craniofacial growth occurs at suture. This is the key point. The craniofacial growth occurs at sutures. So we can see few sutures over here. This is frontomaxillary suture, zygomatico maxillary suture, pterygomaxillary suture, and zygomatic temporal suture. So this red section is a complex which is known as nasomaxillary complex. The nasomaxillary complex will grow downward and forward as a result of the suture proliferation. So that is the theory of suture theory. That is the theory that the concept behind sutural theory. The nasomaxillary complex, so this maxillary complex, it grows forward, so this forward and downward. So this grows forward and downward along with the mandible. So it needs to be balanced with the growth of uh, mandible. So it grows forward and downward along with mandible. So there will be parallel sutures, that is paired sutures. All these sutures are present on the both sides. So this parallel sutures pushes this nasomaxillary complex downward and forward. So this is the concept of sutural theory. According to Sisher, what he believed was the proliferation of connective tissue between two bones which causes growth and functional maintenance of bone. That is, it, it is happening at the sutures. And all bone forming elements like cartilage, sutures and periosteum are growth centers which are actually responsible for facial growth and assumed all were under tight intrinsic genetic control. So, it is also emphasizing the role of genetics but is stressing upon the sutures. But just like genetic theory, the sutural theory also is not accepted well because there is a lot of things going against this. When transplantation of suture occurred, there is no growth. So when scientifically transplanted the sutures, it cannot produce a growth. So this is rejected. And this sutural theory cannot explain the microcephaly and hydrocephaly conditions and also the cliff palate. If the growth occurs at these areas, the microcephaly and cliff palate will not be happen or will not happen these conditions. So microcephalus or hydrocephalus and also the cleft palate is not explained by the sutural theory. And one more thing is the remodeling of bone that is the periosteal remodeling of bone is influenced strongly by the environmental factors. Not it is uh, it is very unlikely to be uh, under the intrinsic hereditary control. So it also did not emphasizing on the environmental factors of bone remodeling or bone growth. So uh, that is why this theory isn't well accepted uh, just like uh, genetics theory. So that's all about sutural theory. The other name is sutural dominance theory given by Weinman and Sisher in 1952. The nasomaxillary complex with uh, paired sutures so it pushes the nasomaxillary complex forward and downward. Uh, it is not accepted because it could not explain microcephalus, cleft palate or hydro 
uh, cephalous condition and when it is transplanted there is no growth so that's a uh, summary of sutural theory next we'll move on to the cartilaginous theory